I'm a painter, he's got expecting it. No, 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 it, it depends on his mood. Don't tell me what to do, you are just like him now. He is here, I'll talk to you later. Pray for me. Good morning. Morning, morning. I got the other maroon. I will take over to finish the canvas. I went by the Sagra building last night. It's coming along. How was the restaurant? Still under construction. They took me around, got a sense of it. And? Too much natural lights, but it will work. You will be able to see the murals from the main dining room. I made some sketches. Every word is the right place for them. Of course it's the right place for them. They have been created specifically for that place. Sometimes your logic just baffles me. So... I wrote Nietzsche, the birth of tragedy, as you said. As I said? Yes. You said if I want to know about Jackson Pollock, I had to read the birth of tragedy. I don't remember, but it's very like something I would say. <laughs> so what about Jackson Pollock? First, tell me what you make of the book. Interesting. That's like saying red. Don't be enigmatic. You are too young to be enigmatic. Well, I think I know why you wanted me to read it. Why? You see yourself as an apple or do you see him as a Dionysus? Don't be so pedestrian. Think more. Dionysus is the god of one and nexus. Movement and transformation. This is Pollock. Wild, rebellious, drunken, unrestrained. The raw experience itself. Apple is the god of orders and matters and boundaries. This is Rodko, intellectual, suburb, rabbinical, restrained. Exactly right, but for a time you're missing the point. How so? You miss the tragedy. The point is always the tragedy. You think human being can be divided up so neatly? Like Pollock is emotional and Rodka is intellect? You embarrass yourself. Think more. Maybe it's like in some of your paintings? Come on, most things are. How? Dark and light. Existing at the same moment in the same plane. Order and house. Pulsating back and forth. Ripples too. We are a subject of both. Apple and Dionysus. 
not one or another. They need each other. Dionysus' passion's focus is made durable by Apollo's world of war. The only way we can endure the sheer ferocity of Dionysus' emotion is because we have a control and intelligence of Apollo. Otherwise, our emotion would just overwhelm us. Back and forth we go, pulsating, myth to myth. And the perfect life would be, would be perfectly balanced between these two, everlastingly. But our tragedy is that we can never achieve that balance. We exist, all of us, for all time, in a state of perpetual, can only endure it with the cool lie of reason. But black is always there, like a mental illness. Like the snow outside the windows. Window. It never goes away. Once it gleams, we can help be it preco being preoccupied with it, for the intimations of our mortality are. But still, we go on, clinging to the tiny bit of hope, that red, that makes rest unendurable. Or just less endurable. That's my friend, Jackson Pollock. Finally, it was just unendurable. What do you mean? I mean, his suicide. He didn't commit suicide. Didn't he? No. He had a car accident. Come on. Man spends years getting drunk, day after day, hammered. Then he gets into an Oldsmobile convertible, races this little country roads like a lunatic. What it is, if not a lazy suicide? Believe me, when I commit suicide, there won't be any doubt about it. No mysterious crumpled car in a ditch. Did he or didn't he? Just give me a headache. It's so boring. When you commit suicide... What? You said when I commit suicide. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You missed short. Listen, kid, let me tell you one thing about your hero. That man really confronted his tragedy. What was his tragedy? He became famous. Tom the Gleam. His muse evacuated. He grew tired of his form. He grew tired of himself. He lost faith in his viewers. How does it happen to a man? Better to ask how it occasionally doesn't happen. He's famous. He's face of magazines. He's artist. He's rich. That's exactly it. Here is a schmuck from Wyoming who can paint. Suddenly he is a commodity. He is Jackson Pollock. Listen, kid, this, this Oldsmobile convertible really did kill him. Not because, because it crashed, because it existed. Why the fuck Jackson have this Oldsmobile convertible? Should Artie start? You would love Jackson. <laughs> Huh, you really care what I think? 
Not at all. <laughs> what? The color. What? Dried blood. When blood got dried, it got darker on the carpet. Which carpet? When my parents died, the blood got darker, and I was surprised by that. What happened to your parents? I don't want to talk about this. Sure you do. What happened? I don't remember. Sure you remember. Look at me. What do you see? I woke up and there was a snow outside the window. And I was glad it snowed because my dad would take me go sleeping. Me and my little sister. But I didn't smell anything. And it was strange because normally my mom would make a breakfast couple of eggs, or something like this. But there was no any smell, and it was cold. I put on my slippers and go down to the hall. And I saw my little sister staring into parents' room. And snow outside the window. Maybe it still will go sleeping. But then I come closer and see that she's staying in a puddle of pee. My little sister staring into parents' room and and then I saw blood. Blood was everywhere. My parents in blood. Night. Red. And that's it. What happened then? We go to our neighbors. Called police. What happened to you? They took us. Prostor houses. Uh, people were kind to us. But. But we also were ruthless. Ruthless? Without our own place. Did police found guys who did it? No. Sometimes I draw them. You draw pictures of men who kill your parents? And how they look like? Normal. You know, when I was a kid in Russia, I saw Cossacks cutting people up and tossing them into the pits. Or I just think I remember it. Maybe somebody told me that. Or I'm just being so dramatic. How old were you? Uh, I was 10, then we moved to Portland, lived into the ghetto alongside other Tinky Tolky Jewish. I was Markus Rutkovich then. Did you change the name? Mm. Yes, my first uh, viewer told me that too many Jewish painters in the books. So Markus Rutkovich becomes uh, Mark Rothko. Now nobody knows that I'm Jewish. Nobody except me.
absence of light. Like going blind? Like going dead. And you equal black with that. And I equate the color black with the diminution of a life force. Mm -hmm. And black is decay and darkness. Doesn't it? I'm asking you. Listen. The black is kind of opposite of red, but not in painting, in reality. But I'm talking about painting. Then talk about painting. In your pictures, the bold colors, the emission element, are strict shapes bordered with strong lines. And bright colors, a Polonian element, is your extravagance, your willingness to lie. What if bright colors will swallow the bright ones and you will lose that extravagance? What do you have left? Go on, go on, go on. I'm fascinated by me in your explanation. Lose those colors, you'll get order, order with no content. You'll get mass with no numbers. You'll get nothing but anterior boxes. And believe me, as you get older, those colors are even harder to sustain. The palette becomes bleaker and we run to find those colors. It's about age. You know what? What? Um, okay, never mind. What? You'll get mad. <laughs> Me? Getting mad at you? No, never. <laughs> you will. No. Come on. Okay. In my opinion, equating black with death is um, kind of sentimental. It's Sounds like antiquated notion. Romantic even. <laughs> Romantic? Yes. I mean, not honest. <laughs> Romantic and dishonest. Sure. In practice, we both know that black is just a tool, like ochre or magenta. It has no effect. And seeing it as a malevolent is a Weird sort of chromatic anthropomorphizing, but nothing more. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's not like uh, equating the death with white, for example. Like snow outside the window. It's different. Oh, different. It's my personal perception. I don't build the whole artistic life. Maybe you around. should. Maybe you should try. Go into all that white. Create your life at the pain. No. Why? Because it. Go to the white and create. And try. Just just try. Step into it. No. no. It, can, it can heal you. And all your past. I'm not ill. Not uh, all art should be psychodrama. Maybe it should, if you're not afraid of it. I'm not afraid. I hope you say so. I'm not. It's just self-humiliating. Okay. Okay. At least equating white with death is not so predictable. Unpredictable. Dishonest, romantic, and predictable. Come on. The painter gets older. The black color starts affects his words, and the cliche appears and his. Afraid of death and that he's saying goodbye in the end. That's all. It's cliché, unless it's not. But it's not true. <laughs> oh, now you know the truth. Tell us the truth then. Look at Van Gogh. His last pictures were made in the most ecstatic yellows and blues known to the mankind. <laughs> Do you enjoy those colors of Van Gogh? Blues and yellows. Absolutely. Or Matisse. His last pictures were nothing but 
the straight color, color stones. Okay, just uh, let me uh, give you one more example. Come on, do it. Okay. Let's back to the Matisse. I'm he not was watching. Yes. He was dying. And he knew that he was dying. But when he was too ill to hold the brush, he just took scissors and started making collages. Scissors. Scissors. And when he was too weak, he just organized the colors on the ceiling. And it was cool because he had to be who he was. And what about you? Look at yourself. You call me a uh, romantic, but you just create from those painters some kind of unreal and even. Uh, Try to switch them to your own childish perspective. And it's not honest to them. If you try to live with them for several years, for several years you would understand a little bit of their own pain. But now just leave them. Leave them in silence. Don't touch them. Okay. You need some coffee. Don't you mind if I go out? Go. Wait! You were asking what black is for me. And you remember the National Gallery in London? And they have this painting which is called The Balthazar's Feast. It's about King of Babylon, old ba big Bible story. Uh, King of Babylon, Balthazar having a feast and his blasphemies, and they got heads appears and writes on the wall. Actually, it's in Hebrew, but Rembrandt's Hebrew was bad. Uh, what I remember is the words. They are flying, they are floating in space and pulsating. Mene, mene, tackle, persim, which is, can be translated as you were checked and weighted on scales found empty. This is what black is for me. What is it for you?